How about your golf stream? You got that radio on there? Yeah, go ahead. What you up to today? Uh, I was going over here to the Yoder and Fry auction, pick up a cat motor grader, take it out to Oklahoma. 10-4. Well, that's a pretty good uh, stretch of road you got to travel there. We're Right now, we're down here by Kissimmee, Florida. Uh, how many days is it going to take you to get up there with it? I'd say Wednesday afternoon I'll have it out there. Well, that's not too bad, seeing that today is Monday. Is that normally what you carry there? Uh, we usually haul graders, bulldozers, excavators. We haul a lot of John Deere tractors, uh, Kubota tractors, a lot of picking up new tractors from ports and taking them multi-stop dealership to dealership. 10-4. How many states you run then? Uh, we usually run Florida up to Virginia, and then from Virginia over to like Ohio, up in Wisconsin, Michigan, North Dakota, and then pretty much North Dakota down to Texas. We don't really go out to the west. Where are you based out of? Uh, we're out of Spring Hill, Florida. Tell me, what's your name? What do you go by on the radio? Uh, my name's Brian. Most of my friends that know me real well call me Snowman. Tell me about what you're running there, engine-wise, uh, transmission. Tell me all the cool stuff about the truck. Well, the truck's, uh, the truck's a 97. Uh, the motor originally had a 430, 470 Detroit. And uh, it blew the turbo and threw a rod through the block. So it's got an 02 500 Series 60 Detroit in it now. Uh, uh, 2002 model. Uh, it's got a straight 10-speed transmission with 355 gears. So far, you know, since I got the truck, I put the visor and exhaust and put the rims on it and <clears throat> bumper. I put all new grill on it. I've got a set of fenders for it. i got to put those on the back. Let's see, new front fenders. Eventually, repaint it black with green stripes on it. I, I like the black and green. Uh, once I get it stretched, lowered, and repainted, and a couple little odds, and then she'll be there. Ten four sounds like it got some really good plans for it. Can't wait to see it when it's done. What size uh, stacks are you running, and uh, what brand are they? Uh, this got eight inch Lincoln. I like Lincoln. I I've had these things covered in snow, salt. There's been oil on them, road debris, and man, they just wipe off. They don't scratch. I mean, it's got the picket elbows on there, and of course, it's got their 40 degree. They call it called a West Coast turn, but that's exhaust I got on there. I'm going to see if I can't do a shameless plug there for them boys up the road. You got any uh, Chrome Shop Mafia four state truck parts on there? Yeah, that's where I buy most of my stuff from. Uh, every time I call there, they either they've got it and it's at my house within two days. I've got their hood emblem on there and uh, the visor on here, uh, the bumper, pretty much everything you see on the truck is from them. Four state, I, I like to deal with them. They're good people. and. Heck, I'll sit there all day on the phone with you and work with you, you know? Well, that's a good deal. What's the advantage of using a step deck versus a removable gooseneck versus a low boy, in your opinion? A step deck, to me, is a little bit more universal. You can use a step deck to haul flatbed stuff, and then you can haul big stuff with it, oversized. The good thing about a low boy is you can haul real big stuff, multi-axle. I know you can do pretty good with a flatbed, but... I don't know, I'd just rather run a step deck. I, down here in Florida, we've got Yoder and Fry Auction, you got Richie Brothers, and you got Alex Lyon, and you got Weeks Auction up in Ocala. And they're always moving a lot of farm equipment out of here and up to the Midwest. So the step deck works better for me out of Florida because I can run a bunch of multi different stuff with it. All right, 10 4. How does a removable gooseneck fit into the picture? Well, an RGN is pretty much a low boy. Uh, it's got an upper deck on it. An RGN and low boy, you can haul a lot taller stuff. And uh, RGNs, they make them in stretch, so you can get on a, a lot of different things with an RGN. Tell me about the process of getting one of those motor graders secured. Well, when you get over the auction there, you got to have your uh, buyer number and your lot number. 
and uh, of course they'll have it sitting there waiting for you. And, uh, once you get that, go back over and loading dock. Some auctions, you gotta go ahead and go get the machine and put it on the trailer yourself, and then that auction, for instance, they loaded it for you. Once you get the machine on there, you gotta tie it down, and it really goes by the way of the machine, how many chains, and really how secure you feel it is. Of course, with something like this, it weighs 52,000, so it's gotta have quite a few chains on it, binders. and then uh, make sure it's real secure and then put your signs on, your flags, and then check the routing on your permit and uh, away you go. 10-4, you make it sound easy there. The first couple times you do it, it's kind of a pain and after you do it a bunch, it's, I wouldn't say second nature or take it second nature because that's usually when you screw up something, but a little bit of work. Well, you're hopping up and down off that trailer like it was nothing. I'm sure you get a workout here, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> Hey Susan, it's Brian over at Gulfstream. Yeah, could you let Sherry know that that grader that's going out to Oklahoma, I got it all loaded up? Right. Exactly. Yoder and Fry over to Oklahoma. Alright, I appreciate it so much. Thank you, ma'am. Bye. How long have you been trucking for? I started driving, I guess it was back in uh, 04. I used to run a van. I was a company driver for about a year and a half. Ran fuel for a year for a company. And I'd say it was about 06, I bought my first truck. Hauled fuel for quite a few years and then just got tired of the fuel. And I have some experience when I was younger working with my dad on a low boy and moving equipment around and stuff like that. So got into this. All right, 10-4. Where you got back at the house rooting for you? I got my wife, Regina, and then I got my two kids. My daughter, Leah, she's eight. My son, Joe, he's four. Usually in the summer when they're both out of school, they'll all call in. I'll take the wife, both kids, and usually when they go with me, I pretty much go anywhere. Just drive out of them all over the place. A lot of people say that they have really fond memories of riding in the truck with dad. Heck, anytime he gets a chance to jump in that truck, man, he, he, he's going. 10-4. <laughs> Sounds like a real trooper right there. Oh yeah. If I want to go to the yard and wash the truck and wax it, or like I put new seats in it, and heck, my wife was the one underneath the truck as I was uh, drilling holes in the floor, so he's like my trooper and helps me do everything. <laughs> That's awesome. What are some of the things that you want to convey to a motorist about the challenges of your job and what would make your job easier? Well, my biggest thing is, you know, you're going down a road and not really so much on the interstate, but you're on like, say, a, a four lane road on the back. You know, say you're going 55, 60 mile an hour, and they'll come around you, and about the minute they come around you, they'll whip in front of you and hit the brakes and turn. Now, God forbid, I don't see him doing that and I run into him and kill him, well that's my fault, which of course I don't want to happen. Because you know, a lot of you can see down in them cars, man, they got them kids. And, and God forbid, you know, I couldn't stop in time, I'll run right in the back of them and kill them. And, uh, you know, that'd be a bad situation for everybody, so, you know, there could be that one second that, you know, my wife calls me and something happened at my house and just at that split second I ain't paying attention and they just whip around you slam on the brakes and you know that's it and, and what are they saving on you know five seconds of their life just because they don't want to be behind a truck you know I just I've never quite understood that you know you got a point there 
uh, right now you're running a step deck. What type of advice you'd want to give to someone else who's thinking about running the same piece of equipment? Well, with the step deck, you just go buy one and try to run a regular load board with one. I think it might be a little tough. I would definitely say you would want to make sure that you have got something set for you or you know people that will help you out getting the right stuff. Because, you know, you have a step deck, you want to get paid what a step deck should get paid. That's how I look at it. Once you get it, I mean, I think you'll do great, but um, it's just getting to that point. Well, that's reasonable advice uh, to make sure that you, you got a game plan and you got some contacts and you got some folks that can feed you some loads so that way you're not really sitting on the undesirable moves. Oh, yeah. It's been nice being able to tag along with you. I hope that your trip goes well going up there to Oklahoma with the Greater. And uh, I'm sure we'll be seeing you again. Oh, yeah. I'll have a good ride out there. It'd be nice going out to Oklahoma. Stay by there, Chris. And uh, take care, man. Be safe. 10-4.